Now, according to emotivist theory, moral terms and sentences are often attempts to influence others. C.L. Stevenson taught that moral terminology was frequently used by the speaker to affect or influence the listener. He wrote, quote, For instance, when you tell a man he oughtn't to steal, your object isn't merely to let him know that people disapprove of stealing. You are attempting, rather, to get him to disapprove of it, adopt your sentiment concerning it, your ethical judgment has a quasi-imperative force which, operating through suggestion and intensified by your tone of voice, readily permits you to begin to influence, to modify his interests." Unquote. On this view, then, when people are in a state of disagreement concerning an ethical issue, it is clear that each party is attempting to influence or persuade the other to adopt their attitude and follow their prescription concerning how one ought to behave rather than making true or false statements. Concerning this issue, Ayers wrote, quote, It is worth mentioning that ethical terms do not serve only to express feeling. They are also calculated to arouse feeling and so stimulate action. Indeed, some of them are used in such a way as to give the sentences in which they occur the effect of commands. Thus the sentence, it is your duty to tell the truth, may be regarded both as the expression of a certain sort of ethical feeling about truthfulness and as the expression of the command, tell the truth. The sentence, you ought to tell the truth, also involves the command, tell the truth, but here the tone of the command is less emphatic. In the sentence, it is good to tell the truth, the command has become little more than a suggestion, and thus the meaning of the word good in its ethical usage is differentiated from the word duty or the word ought. In fact, we may define the meaning of the various ethical words in terms both of the different feelings they are ordinarily taken to express and also the different responses which they are calculated to provoke. Unquote. There are many other examples which could be employed to illustrate the use of moral terms in language that are beyond the scope of this video. In order to further comprehend emotivism, it is also important to show what emotivism is not. Emotivism is not subjectivism, which is the view that X is morally wrong or right if it is approved of. Whereas subjectivism states that moral terms and sentences are assertions of the existence of certain feelings by the speaker, Emotivism states that ethical terms are expressions of feeling and provoking exhortations. It is important to distinguish between the claim, I like X, and expressing a disapproval of X. In essence, X is good means boo X. If X is good were an assertion that I like X, then when you tell me I am wrong about X being good, you would be telling me that I'm wrong, that I like X. In other words, you would be telling me that I don't value X. On this point, A.J. Ayers wrote, For whereas the subjectivist holds that ethical statements assert the existence of certain feelings, we hold that ethical statements are expressions and excitants of feeling which do not necessarily involve any assertion. For in saying that a certain type of action is right or wrong, I am not making any factual statement, not even a statement about my own state of mind. I am merely expressing certain moral statements. For in saying that a certain type of action is right or wrong, I am not making any factual statement not even a statement about my state of mind. I am merely expressing certain moral sentiments, and the man who is ostensibly 
contradicting me is merely expressing his moral sentiments, so that there is plainly no sense in asking which one of us is right. Emotivism is a form of non-cognitivism. Non-cognitivism is the meta-ethical position which states that ethical terms do not express propositions and therefore cannot be true or false, that moral judgment is not capable of being objectively true since they do not describe an objective feature of existence. This, of course, places emotivism in opposition to moral realism, which states that moral terms are verifiable and real, not simply expressions of emotion. Hello there, so this is just a friendly reminder that if you enjoyed this video, please give it a thumbs up and make sure that you share it with all your friends on Facebook or wherever, whatever social networking site you frequent. Doing these two things will help my videos get more exposure, you know, YouTube algorithms and such. So please help me out by doing that. I would like to double my subscribers by, you know, the end of this year. That would be really cool. So with that said, I hope you enjoyed this portion of the series and stay tuned for more.